What a night. It's a magic night. It's a magic night. Did you mention that Elvin Bishop was sitting in with us all night? The great yeah. Elvin Bishop yeah. from the from the Paul Butterfield blues band of the 60s. And, oh, hi! Uh, his own solo thing, Fool Around, Fell in Love. He's the nice greatest guitar player. Thank you very much for joining us. How you doing? Bruce and Al on the horns, and we're going to go nuts tonight. I, I have to apologize if I seem a little groggy or a little foggy today. I had kind of a mishap driving home last night. What happened? Well, we had a snowfall here in uh, the tri-state area yesterday. We only got a couple of inches, and it was uh, bitterly cold, so it was very dry. And for some reason, I'm out of that squirt stuff in my uh, car, the windshield wiper squirt stuff. Yeah. And you, you don't really think about that until, of course, uh, there's none in, in the uh, reservoir there. And after one or two passes with the, uh, the dry wipers and the dry snow, it became sort of opaque. <laughs> and, and really, pretty much all I could see was shadow as yeah. I drove... So I said, I, you know, I, uh, this is a hazard. I better correct this. So uh, we, we got some uh, fluid, the windshield wiper fluid, and, and I, oh, <laughs> it just, some just arrived now. And, and I said, you know, we'll, we'll just fill up the tank, and then we'll squirt the windshield on the drive home. And they said, okay, and we'll also throw in a gallon of the stuff so you'll never run out. You'll just, I'll have windshield wiper fluid for, you know, my grandchildren will have Lovely, this yeah. stuff right here. All right, so they tossed this jug in the back of my car, and it was full. It was a full gallon. Now we have, I guess, about a third in there. But, you know, they didn't think to tighten down the cap. Ah. So this stuff poured all over my back seat, and it won't freeze. So it's not like you could <laughs> chunk it out and get rid of it. There was about a two-inch puddle of this stuff in the back seat. Now, let's see if we can get anything off the label here. Well, here, I think this is a good sign right here, right there, when you're thinking about spending an hour in a closed car. You want, you want this. You want that someplace. <laughs> let's see. It says, may be fatal or cause blindness if swallowed. Vapor harmful. Uh. So, now, I'm, I'm not stupid. I think, gosh, I, uh, I can't be breathing this stuff. So, of course, I drive an hour and a half home last night with the, with the windows down. <laughs> it was 10 degrees here yesterday, ladies and gentlemen. 10 degrees. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. It's fully blended and ready to use. Oh, well, that's good. It'll put you right to sleep. <laughs> Let's see what's in here. Mm -hmm. It's combustible. It's, uh, it's uh, ammonia. Yes. And it's something else. <laughs> but it is toxic, yes. No, I think they've switched to the non-toxic ammonia. <laughs> it's safe now. The kids can drink all they want. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's see. What else have we... Now what are you doing? Huh? Well, you just you grabbed it right off. You know, there's a show in progress here. Where, where's the ingredients? Ammonia. That's right. Yeah, no. Thank you. Thank you for underlining that ammonia. Thank you very much. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you couldn't have selected a better night to tune in. It's Tuesday, and we got for you a Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. Hal, what do you have for us tonight? Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hal. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, Dave, uh, Hal, let me did you ask understand you... the point of my little story there? Sure. Yeah, yeah somehow two thirds of a gallon of this uh, yeah. highly poisonous stuff had been right. dumped in the back of my car. Right. I had to drive home in freezing cold weather with the windows rolled up right. and breathe this nonsense for an hour right. and a half. I'm very sorry, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go on with your little time okay. killer, Hal. Dave, let me ask you a question. Well, first of all, why didn't you just roll the windows down? I don't understand. That. I did. I ended up having to roll them down, and it was 10 degrees. I'm lucky to be alive. Well, I have the strength of 10 men. Wasn't it freshening? Huh? Wasn't it what? F fresh? Yes, it was yes. fresh. All right, Dave, let me ask you something while we're talking about this. Uh, who's your favorite? Kenny Rogers. <laughs> it's Kenny Rogers, Hal. Bring him out. <laughs> okay. From the world-famous legend show at the Imperial Palace in Las Vegas, you're right, it's Kenny Rogers impersonator Mark Hines. Yeah, He's come on one. out. You've got to know when to hold up. I know when to fold up. I know when to walk away. 
know when to run You never count your money While you're sitting at the table There'll be time enough for counting When the dealing's done Nice job. Nice to see you, Mark. Thank you very much. Kenny Rogers. <clears throat> Kenny Rogers impersonator Mark Hind. Was that who it was, Paul? Dave. What is it? Ah. That's toxic. Ah. Oh, oh. Toxic, Dave. Oh. Oh. Well, let's uh, let's call the LL Bean operator. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. On the drums tonight, you may have seen him in the Eric Clapton video with the little triangle, but he's going to play a lot more tonight. Mr. Steve Ferroni on Hi, the drums. Hi, Steve. Nice to see you. Hello. What, what became of... Now, last night we had uh, Omar... Omar Hakim. Omar Hakim. One of, one of the scrappiest middleweights. Uh, you know, I fought him in Atlantic I City. I heard you did, yeah. You had a bout. But now, what, whatever became of our own uh, gifted drummer, Anton F Fig? An Anton, Anton Fig is in, uh, is in, in Japan, touring Japan this yeah. week with Booker T and the MGs. Good gig. Yeah, not a bad gig. Well, and not as be, good as this gig. He'll be back when? He'll be back uh, whenever we're back. Yeah. Well, after this week, we're off for a week. Then when we come back, we'll have the full compliment. Omar Hakim, I want him back. <laughs> you want me to just fire I just, Anton? I just enjoy periodically screaming... Omar Hakim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the happiest man on the face of this planet because immediately following tonight's telecast, I'm getting married. <laughs> It's, I know it sounds crazy. I've only known you, what, like eight minutes? Oh, and it's love, it's exactly. love. Exactly. You can't start it like a car, you can't stop, stop it, it with a gun. Eileen and I, is it Eileen? Yeah, we're going to be married. I just want to, have to double check for the paperwork. I'd like the uh, ceremony to be performed by the NBC nurse. Get her down here. I, I may swoon, you never know. Uh, last night, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you watched the big program, but we, uh, you know what we did, Paul? We called our friend. There's a, a lovely young woman who works in a building uh, across the street, just uh, one block south of us. We're between 49 and 50, and she's between 48 and, and 49. And we look out into her office on the 14th floor, and, and we called her last night, and we were going to do something really exciting. We had a man here with a, a beautiful hawk, beautiful uh, yellow-beaked, uh, orange-spotted hawk. And the hawk was going to fly over to her office. How do you have that uh, videotape? Sure. This is our uh, Emmy Award-winning director and uh, racing legend, Hal Gurney. Hal, roll the videotape of roll what tape. transpired here. Hal, will you be at the wedding later? Yeah, you bet. There goes the hawk, right across 49th Street. See? Right into that office. Very, very exciting. That's great. And, and then what happened, Hal? The hawk came back, right? Show the videotape of the hawk. Yeah, here, now here, watch. Here comes the hawk. This is a very rare animal. They brought it down from upstate New York coming back in. Whoops, wait a minute. What? The hawk was gone. The, just, just took off, not accustomed to being in the city. And, and at one point, Morty said, well, the hawk went up 6th Avenue. And we thought, well, of course, the hawk's going to, uh, to Central Park. And, uh, but nobody seemed to be too concerned about it except me. But I, you remember, Paul, I warned people what might happen if there sure. was a hawk. Hal, roll that warning uh, last sure. night. When, when, with the, the minute the hawk was lost, I had... There's a bird. Not a bird, but a, a, a hawk, and it's just a matter of time before babies are being plucked from their carriages. That's, hey, you know, don't boo me. That's what hawks do. They swoop down on infants and pluck them right out of their carriages and take them to Trenton. You can just... All right, so that was my warning. That was my instinctive reaction to the situation. I said, you know, 
You shouldn't be laughing at this because it's not all that funny. A hawk doesn't know. A hawk is in the wild just looking for prey and could swoop down on anything, jerk it out of a carriage, and take it who knows where. Absolutely. Everybody laughed. Oh, Dave, you're, you're, you're an old lady, they said. Dave, you're, <laughs> you're, you're a reactionary ninny, they called me. And they just laughed and scoffed and went on drinking their smart little drinks and talking their smart little... Uh... Anyway... So, when, when NBC News, thank God, somebody cooler heads prevailed, when NBC News found out that there was a hawk, a, a wild, vicious, savage, biting hawk, <laughs> loose here in Manhattan, they dispatched a camera crew up to Central Park, and wait till you see this rare footage that NBC <laughs> News got last night. Hal, roll that rare NBC News footage, the and we'll just, amazing. we'll see, see, look, there's the hawk, there's the baby, it's being carried off by the... <laughs> That's right, Will. They're not laughing now, are they? They found the baby. The baby is fine. They found the baby early this morning in Prescott, Arizona. Ah. At, a, at a trailer park there in Prescott. Everything's fine. fine. The family has been notified, and they're, they're flying out to pick up baby. So that, was, that was our little uh, escapade last night. Boy, oh boy. Uh, Hal, do you have uh, something special tonight? It's time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. Hal, uh, what do you have for us this evening? This is uh, the control room here yeah, on the sixth yeah. floor. Hi, Hi, Hal. How Hi, are Dave. you? Hi, Dave. Hal, do me a favor. Before yeah. the big Network Time Killer, why don't sure. you introduce your friends there in the control room? Well, how about uh, over here? Brian McAlone. Oh, Brian. You know, Brian nice yeah. 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 Peter Fadovich. Pete, how are you? You know, Jude. You I know thought Jude, Pete yeah. quit. No, he's still with us. Did, didn't he take that early retirement buyout thing? <laughs> Did you, Pete? I thought he left a couple of years ago. He's back for a visit. Oh, good to see you yeah, again, Pete. Yeah, right. And, and here's Jerry. You know, Hi, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Howard. Foley. Nice to see you. Yeah. Ruth. And the rest of the people are just, nice uh, just uh, standbys from the audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right back, back there, yeah. That's the, the preferred VIP seating. Right there. Uh, all right, Hal, what do you have for us tonight? Uh, tonight. Hey, thank God that hawk thing turned out all right, huh? My God, I was really sweating, yeah. 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 Uh, Dave, tonight we have a guy who sticks his hand into a spring-loaded metal trap. How's that sound? Wow, it sounds like top-notch entertainment to me, Hal. You bet it is. And, uh, a man sticking his hand in a spring-loaded Spring-loaded, spring-loaded, okay. not just, uh, you know, a rubber band. Thing. All right. All right, and here is Todd Robbins, the purveyor of amazement, putting his hand in an animal trap. Jerry, dissolve. Oh, this will be good. Yeah. I'm going to stick his hand in a trap. Probably, probably had his suit pressed for that this afternoon. <laughs> ah, we have a wonderful program tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Curtis, Eddie Money, and Rosie Perez. It will all begin in a couple of moments. Come on back here. Thank you very much. Just my chair here. It's slipping. We didn't get a chance to attend to it earlier there. It also adjusts my back when I do that. The adjustment, the adjustment of the chair is actually therapeutic for the adjustment of my back. Letter number four. Dear Dave, as a college professor, I find that classes seem to last forever if the students are not involved. Good point. Would you have some leftover Hal Gurney network time wasters that I might have that would be appropriate for the classroom? Now, she's referring to a little segment uh, our own director, Hal uh, Gurney, has made very, very popular, and sometimes we begin the show with a little Hal Gurney network time killer, and they're, they're wanting to know if we have any left, left over that might be uh, suitable for classroom use. Uh, Professor Conley here, uh, Ellen uh, Alexander Conley from New York, New York. Yes, uh, we have something. It's called Hal Gurney's Chem Lab Bloopers and Practical Jokes. Let me repeat this for you now. It's Hal Gurney's Chem Lab Bloopers and practical jokes. Go ahead and roll that, Hal. This is fun playing with these chemicals. This is a mixture of two 
different liquids which, when combined... Oh, oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, get your safety goggles. <laughs> yes, sir, Lee. What a night. What a night. This is the night people will talk about for years oh, to come. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was, I was there. I was there the night they had Winona on. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do a commercial. We'll be back here with Martin Mall, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Dave, everybody in show business needs a gimmick. I'm no different. Sometimes your gimmick oh, might be hi. a... Oh, hi! Sometimes... <laughs> sometimes your gimmick might be cameras coming in and out of yeah. a shot, you know, other right. times. I'm figuring this over the weekend. Ed Kooky Burns, you remember him from 77 Cents? 1959. Century. He's not using his name anymore. Yeah. Kooky? What if I start using it? What if I become Paul Kooky Schaefer? Does that make any sense to you? Very Can nice. you, do you think from now on refer to me that way? So I would refer to you as Paul Kooky Schaefer? Kooky, yeah. And when you say kooky, uh -huh. you gotta do you gotta, this. You gotta kooky do that. Schaefer, yeah. And, and what if I just said kooky? Could I say that? Uh, you could say that if you were, for instance, Connie Stevens recording a record, Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb. Uh -huh. which, which, by the way, maybe we could get Barbara Gaines to re-record her hit, Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb, and it would be about me, Paul Kooky Schaefer. So from here on in, if you wouldn't mind... Paul Kooky Schaefer. I think it might spice up my career a little bit. Okay. I'd be happy to, Paul, or Paul Kooky. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yesterday, of course, was uh, Mother's Day. I have here some uh, leftover Mother's Day cards. Did you send your mother a Mother's Day card? Sure, I did. Of course I did. Did you Kooky? send yours? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, sure. I, I chatted with Mom yesterday. Everything's Good. fine back there in Indianapolis. We have some uh, leftover... Uh... Yeah. We have some... We have some leftover Mother's Day cards. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've made a mistake here, haven't I? Yeah, okay. Hal, it's time for another Hal Gurney... <laughs> time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. <laughs> Things seem to be going pretty well tonight. Hi, Hal, how are you? Dave, uh, let me explain. Uh, nice to see you. Yeah, Bailey's camera was in trouble. That's why Joe was trying fine. to get that shot. By the way, Hal, yeah. did you get the message we need to call Paul Kooky from now on? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have his comb in here. Okay. <laughs> uh, Dave, I guess you want Hal, to know let me ask what you we a have question. for tonight. Right, yeah. During the show, do you and the rest of the crew sit in there and make snide remarks about me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Of course not, Dave. What do you have for us tonight, Hal? Well, tonight, Dave... We have a man who holds the world's record for bouncing a soccer ball on his head. That sounds perfect, Hal. Yeah. Uh, well, let's welcome then from Kenya. Here is Abuto King Nyanjong. And take it away, fellas. Yes. And... Thank you very much, Hal. That was wonderful. The Hal Gurney uh, Network Time Killer. All right. Now, now what are they laughing at? Huh? There was something else? Did I miss something? What else were they laughing at? Did I, what did I miss? Huh? Do what? Oh, he's still back there bouncing the ball. Oh, I see. All right, you, you can take a break if you want. All right. 
Let's, uh, now let's get on to the, uh, leftover. <laughs> what, do, what do we do? Is he just going to do this all night? Uh, okay. He's capable of doing it all night. He is. Okay, let's do some, uh, leftover Mother's Day cards, and then, uh, we'll get on with the show. Here's a Mother's Day card for you. No matter what the county said, I think you were a good mom. Mother's Day card right there. Here's another one, Mother's Day card number two. Mom, let's update your will. That's a beautiful yeah, that's sentiment. Cute, isn't it? Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, here's a nice one. Quit calling me. Mother's Day card. Oh, I like this one. Uh, Mom, thanks for the baldness, Gene. <laughs> the baldness, Gene. The baldness, Gene. Uh, please tell me I'm adopted. That's the... Uh... Mm-hmm. You drove Dad to an early grave, but I know you meant well. Isn't that is beautiful? Sweet, is he still bouncing the ball? No. <laughs> I think I've inherited your hacking cough. Yeah. Uh, okay. Isn't it time you stopped buying my underwear for me? Uh, you seemed uh, to like this card last year, so here it is again. They're all leftover Mother's Day cards. Mm. Uh, to the only person who's ever seen me naked. That's kind of... Kind of, a, kind of an odd response, isn't it? Uh, hey, Mom, thanks for trying to kill the mother of my cheerleading rival. That's Card there. This is sort of cute. I'm glad you had sex with Dad. A little arrangement of flowers there. Uh, you don't know me, lady, but do you mind if I call you Mom? Perfect. And our last one here, nature, nature made you my dad, surgery made you my mom. Mother's Day card. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, we'll uh, do a commercial. We'll be back here with the youngest mayor in the United States. That sounded great. What was it? Is that jazz or some kind of yeah. fusion? Or, well, what was that exactly? A very, Earth, very, wind, and you're fired. It was Earth, wind, and fire. Yes, 1970. It was. You, you know it. 1977. 78, I think. 78, 77. 77. Boy, it sounds great. Thanks are they still around, Earth, wind, and fire? No, sir. They are. What are, can we get like two of them? Earth and wind? Yeah. <laughs> at least. I hear wind and fire are right. teamed Morty, up. Morty, put a in a call duo. to wind at least, will you? <laughs> Dave, you know, they call the wind Mariah. Exactly, Paul. Good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, Rich Hall will be out here, a very funny gentleman, a bit later, and uh, leggy supermodel uh, Christy Turlington. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for luck. I mean, you're, well, I don't know. You're in for real big-time television entertainment. You're, uh, uh, it's time, once again, for a Hal Gurney Network time killer. Hal! Director Hal Gurney. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hal. You know, I was trying to say you're in luck because we have a Hal Gurney Network time killer. 
it, it seemed to work out. Whatever you said, Dave, is all right. Yeah. What do you have for us tonight, Hal? Well, tonight, Dave, we're fortunate to have with us Mr. Todd Robbins. Todd Robbins? Yes, the purveyor of amazement. Uh huh. Who is going to inflate a hot water bottle until it explodes. Oh, my God, he's going to blow up a hot water yeah. bottle until it explodes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, right. here he is. Todd and It's, it's not like somebody puts a gun to this guy's head. It was his idea. Uh, let's do a commercial and then continue with the big show, kids. Come on back. I'm just looking through this Sports Illustrated, and there's a, a story in here uh, and toward the back of the magazine about Babe Ruth, and there's a picture of uh, Biff Henderson standing right next to the Babe. Babe Ruth. It's crazy. It's wacky. Uh, tomorrow uh, on the program, Tom Brokaw will be here. Is that right, Tom Brokaw? The uh, anchor of NBC's nightly news program will be here. Also, the Rembrandts and uh, Tom Arnold, who is the... Uh... <laughs> You got to turn on the tree lights, lady. That's all I can tell you. Um, and uh, yet to come on tonight's program, we have uh, Jeff Stilson and uh, the exotic and endangered birds. I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. be a lot of fun. I understand that we are going to try something else. We just keep trying. <laughs> It's time, ladies and gentlemen, for another one of Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Hal, what do you have for us tonight? Okay. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hal. How are you? Fine, Dave. How are things going in the control room tonight? Just very good. You know Jerry. Here Hi, Jerry. Yes, Jerry yes, Foley, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Jerry, nice to see you. Right. Jerry Foley. Uh, and, and the gentleman to your left, of course, Pete. Pete Fedovich, ladies and gentlemen. And then the gentleman to Pete's left. Brian McAloon. Yeah, Brian. Brian, yeah, Brian. Brian, Brian Howard, Let's nice hear to see you. Peter LaSalle. Hey, Pete, stand up and take a bow. There oh, yeah, he is. Peter LaSalle. He is standing. All right. Then. Right. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Is, okay. is Biff Henderson in there, too? Did I see you? Yeah, oh. Biff, stand up. Where's Biff? Where? No, he's outside, Dave. Hal, uh, what do you I have for us tonight on your big network time killer? Well, tonight, Dave, we have a very special holiday treat. Uh-huh. Yeah, currently performing at the Big Apple Circus at Lincoln Center. Honey, would you hold that card up a little bit, please? Uh, at Lincoln Center until January 10th, here's Mongolian contortionist Tunga. Tunga, contortionist. There we go. There's.
very, very nice. Thank you very much, Tunga. I, you know, I, I, I saw an end table. I was shopping for furniture over the weekend. I saw an end table looked a little like that. <laughs> Should have picked it up. Pete Fadovich was telling me earlier that he has a friend who was married to a contortionist years ago. And? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> now, I'm sorry, she, she wasn't married. They weren't married. He, they were engaged. I see. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, know, what be, I don't know what happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry, they were, but apparently they didn't get married, and I, I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, we have to pause here for a uh, commercial. Jeff Stilson will be with us when we come back, folks. Well, something quickly happy passover by the way happy last night passover i went over to you thank you i went to the most interesting passover seder again this year stevie wonder was there it was the most exciting thing they gave him a piece of matzah he said who wrote this <laughs> but happy passover to you well thank you paul <laughs> for invoking that bit of ugliness early ah uh, President uh, Clinton out there in the Pacific Northwest had the big uh, summit meeting with Boris Yeltsin, and I'm sitting at home Sunday. You know, I think it's a good idea that President Clinton runs. I think I'm all in favor of that. Do you, have, do you folks like the idea that our president gets up and jogs every day? No. I have no problem with that uh, whatsoever. And, and generally, I can't think of anything to, to, to criti critique. <laughs> or criticize the current administration for or about. And so I'm sitting at home Sunday and I'm watching uh, one of the... Thank you very much. I'm watching uh, one of the uh, news magazine uh, programs and they run this footage of Bill Clinton running with his entourage and his uh, FBI guys, Secret Service guys. Roll that, will you, Hal? There you go, there, now look. I have no problem with this. But is he sending the right message by wearing tights? <laughs> Really? Why? I never thought of it that way. Why is he wearing tights? Men in tights, uh... Why is he wearing those tights? I don't know. It looks like the bottom half, it looks like the bottom half of a really bad mascot costume, you know? <laughs> like he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't put the owl head uh, on like or some something yet. Oh, San Diego he's, Yeah, he's something. got the bottom half <laughs> of the, the costume on. Bill Clinton, our president, running there. What are we doing on the uh, program? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Keller. What do you have for us tonight, Hal? Yeah, I love that. We do this in uh, lieu of actual entertainment, you know. There's the uh, control room here in uh, 6A. Hi, Ha Hi, Hal. Hi, How are you? Fine, thank you. Nice to see you, Hal. You too, Dave. Hal, why don't you introduce the folks in there with you? Oh, you know Jerry Foley. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Nice Jerry to see Foley. you. Ruth Roberts over Ruth, there. Ruth, nice to see you. Pete Fadovich, uh, R.A.D. Pete, Hi, good to have yeah. you with us. Remember Jude. Yeah. yeah, Jude Brennan. There's... Pete, wait a minute. Peter. I was heard you talking about there was some trouble at the house last night when you got home. Yeah. Yeah, what happened? Oh, some dinner. What'd you have? Cold shoulder and hot tongue. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. All right, Hal, so now let's get back to uh, what you were talking about. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, you asked me what we had tonight? Yeah, on the big... Network Time Killer. Okay. Uh, tonight we have a very special treat from the world-renowned Cirque du Soleil. Remember they were on once before? Oh, yeah, they're the very best. Cirque oh, du Soleil. Know. They're in town now, aren't they, they, Hal? They are in town. They're going to be here uh, actually performing at Battery Park through May 2nd. And let's introduce now the Chelnikov family. All right. Thank you, Hal.
about that. I was, I was talking to those people earlier, and they told me that they got the idea for the act one rainy day at home, and then they, they were making their own pretzels. <laughs> that gave them the idea for the act. <laughs> Funny how things come from the strangest place. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a commercial, and uh, when we come back, uh, Peter O'Toole will join us. Nice to see you tonight. <laughs> Did, you, did your mom have a nice uh, Mother's Day? Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah. Yes, she did. Oh, and how about your, your wife now, Mother? My wife is a new mother. Dude, was and, this uh, like a big day at your house? Yeah, it was a big day. I, I uh, tried to make her breakfast in bed. Yeah. And I burnt the coffee, and I just said, that's it. You know, happy Mother's Day, babe. But uh, <laughs> did you do something nice for your mother on Mother's I Day? I did, uh, yeah, this year I did something special. I sent her the 50 bucks, which I do every Mother's Day. <laughs> Good for and you. I, uh, sweet I said, of I, you. I, I, oh, thank you. <laughs> I uh, sent her one of those uh, clubs, those anti-theft things for the Oh, car. the club! Yeah. <laughs> That's a thoughtful <laughs> present for a mother. <laughs> I sent mom... <laughs> it's just, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, there's something wonderful going on here in the studio the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, Friday night, I tossed a pencil through the window, right. and and about we we realized we were on a seven second delay. Uh -huh. well, so so we didn't hear the the window shatter till oh two or three days later. Right. Now tonight, you may have noticed you more observant uh, viewers at home there. You may have noticed I just picked up the pencil and heard that. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you uh, picked a great night to be here. It's time for another Hal Gurney. Hal Gurney, by the way, our director and racing legend, Hal Gurney. Time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. Hey, Hal. Hey, Hal. Yeah, hi. hi nice Dave. to see you, Hal. How you doing? Not bad. Dave. How's your weekend? Uh, it was very good. Uh, yeah, did you uh, do something special for your mom? Yes, we went on on Saturday, had yeah. a nice lunch. Yeah. Why'd, you, why'd you go out on Saturday? It was Sunday was the holiday. Well, it, everything's so crowded on, on, on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, now, and mom, you... mom thinks Saturday is, uh, is Mother's Day. So oh, I see. It worked out very well. You, yeah. you, you weren't yeah. trying to play a little trick on mom, were you, Hal? Oh, no, no. Yeah. Really. How about that Jerry Foley? Isn't he the best? He, he, he's here tonight. Dave. Hi, Jerry. Nice to see hey, you. Jerry, yeah. Yeah. Coming along very nicely, Dave. You know, yeah. after every show, Jerry gets so worked up, he has to run right home and take a quick shower. He yeah, just works himself true. into that kind of a state. Yeah. He's just a yeah. madman and a maniac. Well, look uh, Dave. at him. Hello, Dave. Yes, Al. You hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, just before we go on, uh, Jerry wanted to apologize for missing that uh, song you were going to do. Oh, that's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, let's just get on with it, Al. Let's All put right. this ugliness behind us. Uh, tonight, Dave, uh, we have a gentleman from Falston, Maryland. Uh -huh. So, can you move to your left? Just a little bit. No, thanks. Who recently Hal, won a match. what's going on in there? Well, he's standing in front of my car today. Oh. I can't see the card. <laughs> uh, you have to introduce the name of one guy and you need a card? It's a long sentence. Uh, <laughs> show, show the card, Joe, quickly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All right, come back. It's the again. preamble right, of the Constitution, Al. That's, right. That's what I'm talking about. Move it. So, uh, I forgot what I was talking about. This fellow from Faustin, Maryland, you know where Faustin is. Yeah. He recently won a national cow calling contest. Cow calling, you say? Yeah, yeah. And he's here. He's Ed Berman with his impersonation of a cow anxiously waiting for food. Ed Berman yeah, doing some cow calling. Music. Take it yeah. away, Ed. Can't do that before. Hey, very 
Nice. Thank you, Ed. Now, I know, I know something else. I know that in addition to making cow sounds, yeah. Ed also does a submarine kind of distress signal. You can do that, too. You hear in all submarine movies. Are we going to get to hear can, that? Can we hear that now, Hal, or not? Yeah, open Ed, those doors. Ed, are you back there? Okay. Is that right? Is it a submarine distress signal? It's a submarine diving. The submarine diving. The dive signal. So you do, you do cows and submarines. I do Model Ts, Belches. Okay, all right, so this will be the submarine. Right. Do you mind? All right, let's hear this a little bit. Okay. Dive, dive. It's just that kind of night, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. See, I got scared when he said, I do a submarine diving, and then he screams, dive! I know. I, thought, <laughs> I know, but it, <laughs> my, my heart came sank. through. Like when I didn't hear the glass break Friday night, it was kind of like, <laughs> oh, that's a little that disappointing. Uh, but he came through like yes, a champ. He sure did. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to pause for a couple of commercials. We'll be right back here with James Belushi. <laughs> How's your weekend? Oh, I had a nice time. Good. Did you always have a nice weekend? Yeah, yes. You know, family was family we, good. What did you do on your weekend? I was traveling in and out. It was in California. I saw Janine Turner, as a matter of fact, in Los Angeles. Saw her out there? Yeah, it was funny. It was because uh, I've seen her like four or five times. She's been on the show a couple of times. And then, I, then when you see somebody outside of the uh, context of your own show, it's all, always a little uh, uh, confusing and rewarding at the same uh. time. Uh, does any of this make... <laughs> But, boy, it's been beautiful weather here in the Northeast. This is last year. Uh, remember, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, it rained every day. Do you remember that? Yes, of course I do. It, it rained like 96, yeah, 96 days in a row here in the Northeast, uh, Northeastern Corridor, some kind of an occluded front. I believe, I believe it was an occluded front, ladies and gentlemen. We got 96 days straight of rain, and the average temperature never got above uh, 40, so it was just kind of a, kind of a chill in the air all all summer last year. This summer, on the other hand, so far the spring, I don't think we're officially in summer, couldn't be lovelier. Beautiful. Couldn't be more exhilarating, more picture perfect. The, the trees are lovely. The birds are in full bloom. <laughs> they are, are they, really? Are, is there a variety of blooming bird? Uh, not that I am aware yeah, you, of. You have no. a charge account of blooming birds, don't you? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't you up there on I Saturday. I don't use it, though. Uh, so anyway, Hal, do me a favor. If we have an external camera, this is our uh, director, ladies and gentlemen, and a racing legend, Mr. Hal Gurney. Hal, are you in there? Yes, sir. Hal, do me a favor. Turn on that external camera. Let's take a look, Paul, and a little Thank summertime through. This now is the intersection of West 52nd and 6th Avenue, or, let's see the sign, Hal, or... Avenue of the Americas. There it is. A lot of people who come to New York ask me, Dave, why do they call it the Avenue of the Americas? It's an interesting story and pretty simple explanation. This street you're looking at right there begins in Gander, Newfoundland. <laughs> runs all the way down the coast of Canada, right into the coast of the United States, right through New York City for about eight miles. It becomes uh, Sixth Avenue. Then it continues down through the United States, through Texas, through Mexico, through Central America, all the way through South America, and down to Tierra del Fuego. Wow. And, and every inch of the Avenue of the Americas looks pretty much like what you see right there. Yes. Boy, it just couldn't be lovelier. Hal, have we seen the park yet? Shoot him a picture of the park, the world-famous Central Park. And uh, there's some... That's, hey, that's radioactive steam. Run for your lives. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Is it, what is it? Oh, I thought it, oh, it might be radioactive steam. I thought it, thought it was some of them famous Manhattan weenies on fire. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's see if we just can't visit with one of these uh, fine people. It couldn't be a lovelier day. Let's, we're going to have to kind of intercept. You, sir, excuse me. Sir, can they hear me? This wasn't the guy, but hello. It's Larry King's brother, his less successful brother. <laughs> Bobby King. Hi, how are you, sir? What is your name, please? My name? Yes. Buck Rogers. Pretty, pretty funny, Buck. Pretty funny. 
Is it actually your name? No. What? Oh. Are you going uh, to to work, Buck? Are you coming home from work? No, I'm going to an audition. What? Oh, are you an actor? Are you a singer? Are you a musician? Yeah, I'm an actor. Yeah. Uh, what is the part you're auditioning for? Well, I'm into auditioning for an agent. Oh, for an agent. Well, very, very good luck to you, sir. You know, what do you have in the bag, by the way, Buck? My bag? I'm sorry? Coffee. Oh, coffee. Oh. Uh, you know, is, is it kind of muggy out there? No, it's kind of windy. It's very kind, nice, actually. Kind of windy. You know what I... It's fall day. Yeah, fall day. Well, it feels like a fall day. I mean... Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Buck, what, I, what I've what noticed... What is the actor related to? I mean, is that a can and someone presses a button or something? What, I, can't hear, I can't hear a word he's saying. I said, where does the laughter come from? Is it on, in can somewhere and you press a button? He's so he's mugging or something. What is he doing for the laughs? Why don't, why don't you hurry on over to that audition, Buck? One of the Smothers Brothers. That was Dick Smothers. Bob, uh, Tommy Smothers. There he goes right there, Tommy Smothers. All right. Well, Buck had kind of an attitude on him, didn't he, Paul? Yeah, he did. Wait, what do you guys got there? We got some sponges. Where, where'd you get those sponges? Stand in your line. Well, how, how come you're not here at the show? What? By one person. Oh, one you, person. you were waiting in line to see the show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, uh, guess what? You're not missing a thing. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. Bring bring those sponges up here, and we'll dunk them in water for you. All right. Yeah. Hey, come on over. Hurry up. Thanks. All right. All right. Be, be careful now. All right. All right. Bye. Okay. I can't, you know, I can't hear these people. Oh, we're having some trouble with my audio. Okay. All right. Now, so we don't need to... All right. We've seen... Okay. Let's just continue looking at those people. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, uh, let's see if we can't find one more person just to chat with here. New York City, biggest city in North America, the city of dreams. How do you do, ma'am? Nice to see you. Do you have a second to, to chat with us? She, she's dying to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice welcome for Jessica Tandy. Jessica Tandy. There's a relative of Paul Schaefer. Hi, how are you? you no, there is, there is a facial resemblance. Hi, sir, how you doing? What, now what are we looking at? Oh, there. What is your name, sir? Okay, I'll tell you what. Maybe we'll come back out onto the streets of New York in a little bit. For some reason, can't seem to hear the people out there. Can they hear me, though? Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, we have something very exciting to do. I, w I want to do that. Sure. Can I do it right now? Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been great. You've been very patient. You sat there while we just sort of wasted time out on 6th Avenue. We have something very exciting for you. It's time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. <laughs> Hal? Can't seem to hear out there. I know yeah, you have I a did. wonderful surprise yeah. for us tonight. What is it, sir? Well, tonight, Dave, we are privileged to have with, with us Jim Grasso. Jim Grasso? Uh, yeah, you never, well, this fellow, he's a postal worker postal who lives worker. in Queens. Yep. And he's going to whistle God Bless America through his nose. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Right. And you heard correctly. Was. He's going to whistle God Bless America right through his nose. Here we go.
gentlemen, we'll be right back with Sam Donaldson. Thank you. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Do we have the kids from the street in? Uh, uh, are the kids from the street here? These were people that uh, couldn't get in to see the show. Hey, hi, how are you? Nice to see you. What's your name? John. John, have a seat. And you're? Peter, nice to see you. What is your name? Cheryl. Cheryl, nice to see you. So we have Peter, Cheryl, and John. Where, where are you guys from? Uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania. And so you're, you're visiting from out of town. You wanted to come and see the show? Exactly. Yeah, and you couldn't get in, and so they gave you some sponges. Here, I'll tell you what. Why don't you give me that gum? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now, you know, uh, since you're here and you didn't get to see the show, I'm going to show you some things that the audience wouldn't normally have seen, okay? A little something special for you guys. Here, I'll, here Paul, I'm turning on the bubble machine. Watch this. We haven't had bubbles in the studio. In a minute, this will be a bubble wonderland. <laughs> Look at that. This one seems a little too interested in the bubbles. Uh, okay, watch this. Radioactive steam coming out of the skyline of Manhattan. You ready? Here we go. Whoa! Yeah. Now, give me those sponges. Have you guys had these sponges before? No, I can't no. say I have. All right, here we go. I'll just do one. Now, as soon as I do this, I'll give it back to you. You guys got to blow because we're really very late, all right? No okay. Anton, here we go. And in fact, a lot of people, when they have the sponges, they come in line, wait in line just for the sponge because it, often it's more entertaining than the show. <laughs> Bye-bye. Good luck to you. Nice to see you. I'm, I'm telling you, that big guy, when he spotted that first bubble, it was... <laughs> Live, living a little too close to Three Mile Island. I think. We have time for anything else? <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with Janine Turner, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Paul. I've just handed this uh, note during the commercial. It's definitely time for me to shave. During the commercial, I started producing gas. Oh. Uh, now, if, uh, let's, let's imagine for a minute that the writers uh, weren't back here working on the show. We'd be screwed. Of course. What the heck could we do? How, how could we uh, fill all of this time here on, on the network? Well, years and years ago, back in 1988, when we were at NBC, our director then, Hal Gurney, a lovely man, by the way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> would, would host something called Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. And it was always something Hal would come up with, and it's just a complete waste of time. Well, Hal was nice enough to jump into the fray in case we needed him here, and we thought, well, what the heck, for old time's sake, let's bring him back. Ladies and gentlemen, Hal Gurney and Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Hal. <laughs> Hey, Dave. Nice to see you. You, How you too. Doing? Did you have a good uh, holiday? It was very good. Yeah. How long have you been in town? About 15 minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Excuse thanks. me, Dave. Dave. Yes, Hal? Uh, I'm not on tape. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's, that's been explained to me, and thank you for caring, Hal. Uh, Hal, what do you have for us tonight on Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers? Well, because of this very special night, Dave, tonight we have... Angelo and Yuna performing the dance of the, what the hell, the Bolia Doras. There we go. Thank you, Al.
Thank you very much, Al. Thank you so very much. Wait a minute, there's more. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested in booking Angelo and Yuna, right. please contact Cheryl Scherfer uh -huh. at Bogarbitz. Back to you, Dave, and dissolve. <laughs> what? <laughs> Al Gurney, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Know Your Staff, everybody. That's that robotic, very creepy music. Scary. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, scary stuff. That's right. <laughs> uh, now, listen to this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for a wonderful segment that we all enjoy so much here in the Ed Sullivan Theater Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Hal, take it away. Hi, Dave. Dave, I know how much you like balloon acts, so tonight we have a guy drumming on balloons. Dissolve one, please. We'll be right back with Ellen Page, everybody. Okay, the nominations for Outstanding Directing in a Variety or Music Program are Jeff Margolis for the 63rd Annual Academy Awards. Dwight Hemian for the Kennedy Center Honors, a celebration of the performing arts, a General Motors mark of excellent presentation. <laughs> Hal Gurney for Late Night with David Letterman series. And the Emmy goes to Hal Gurney, Late Night with David Letterman. I don't believe this. <laughs> I have a few people to thank. Actually, my list is the same as Lynn Whitfield's. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but I would like to add, well, Jack, Dave, Morty, Jude, Barb, the Barbers, the whole late night family, a 6 8 crew. Actually, they do the show for me. Sometimes I don't show up for weeks at a time. <laughs> and a terrific DGA team. Pete. Oh, Pete Fadovich. I've been working with Pete Fadovich for 30 years. 30 years. I'm really sick of him. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. I, Brian, Jeff, Biff, and I would like to thank the man who gave me my start in this business, Jack Parr. Thank you, Jack. Very nice, very peppy, very exciting. 
Uh, people who watched this uh, program the last couple of years here on CBS and before that uh, on NBC, the two versions of this show we did for NBC, probably know that uh, each night this television show is directed uh, by a man named Hal Gurney. And, and what he does, he sits in the control room, and for the life of me, I have no idea where that is. <laughs> and he uh, visually, as it happens, assembles the show. Uh, tonight is Hal's last night as director of The Late Show. Yep. Fortunately, Hal uh, will be staying with us and we'll be working uh, on other projects in the future together. Uh, but it's a little sad because, uh, you know, we've done over 2,000 shows and, and Hal has uh, been down there for most of them. I, I met Hal, I guess, in 1980 uh, when he came to work for us. I know, we're all that old. Uh, on a show over at NBC, and uh, this man's a wonderful director. I mean, he, he makes the show better, uh, he makes the show funnier, uh, he makes me better. Nothing can make me funnier. Uh, oh, wait a minute, I didn't mean <laughs> And uh, uh, it's, uh, he's also uh, just a, a terrific man, and uh, I've said this before, I, uh, he's, he's the kind of guy uh, I, I wish I was, and, and keep working to be better in the way that, that uh, Hal is better. Uh, Wally's been with us. Uh, he's won, uh, I guess, uh, two Emmys, and we're all very pr proud of that. Now, um, there's no way that uh, myself or anybody else here on the staff of The Late Show will ever be able to uh, accurately uh, repay Hal uh, for his friendship and his uh, creative drive and, and voice that has made this show so successful over the years. Uh, we were thinking of something to do, something symbolic, and uh, here's what we have come up with, and, and for the life of me, Hal, I, I just pray to God this doesn't embarrass you silly. This, uh, this theater that you folks were in, uh, about three years ago when we looked at it, it was a cold day in February, and uh, we came in here and the place was very close to being condemned, and literally it was standing pools of sewage and choking clouds of asbestos, and we all said, well, you know, this is great, you know, to hide, hide bodies when you fire Connie Chung or something, but we, we can't, we can't possibly, can't do a television show here, and Hal says, well, no, you know, I think maybe you could. Uh, and it was due largely to Hal's vision of that idea and his pursuit and his dedication and his brilliance that you are now in perhaps the finest television facility here in New York City, uh, mostly because of Hal Gurney's efforts. Now, Is, is Hal still in the control room, or did he leave early tonight? Where, where uh, can Sorry, we see? What did you say, Dave? <laughs> can we see the man? Is he in there? Can we turn on the camera in the control room? There he is, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Hal Gurney. So, Hal, uh, what we have done, and uh, we hope you appreciate this gesture. And it's it's only a symbol. We can never, as I said. Uh, express or repay you for what you've meant to us. Uh, we've put a little plaque on the control room on the outside, mounted permanently, there it is, uh, dedicated to Hal Gurney, director of Late Show with David Letterman, in recognition of his vision and contribution to the restoration of the Ed Sullivan Theater, uh, CBS Incorporated, May 1995. Hal Gurney. We, we would not be here today without Hal Gurney. God bless you, Hal. We have to go. Have a great holiday weekend. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. me tonight uh, introducing the rerun as the director of our program, uh, Mr. Hal Gurney. Hi, Hal. Hi. Hal, you know, if you're out here, uh, who's in the control room queuing up the videotape? Oh, shit. <laughs>